lady knows Holly's name. She has struggled all through life with her name. We named her Kristen Holly Thomas, but then we always called her Holly. So anytime in school, they would say, Kristen, and she didn't know that that was her name, I guess. And then when she uh, would go to do federal things, you know, they always go by your full name, but she's always gone by Holly. And then now, three months ago, she married Brad Carmine, so it's all changing again. And it's a good thing God knows her name, amen? Well, he knows your name too, and he knows my name. In fact, everybody on three, tell me what your given name is. Are you ready? One, two, three. Really? You go by that? Hey, names meant a great deal uh, to the Israelites in Bible times. They really did. In fact, uh, they didn't name a child till the eighth day of his life. The first eight days, they would look at him and they would ex- or her and they would examine him or her. And then after eight days, they would, uh, uh, they would come up with a name. And the meaning was extremely important to them. Now, that's not so today. We don't really choose a name the same way they did as far as the importance of it. Uh, We choose a name now maybe to inspire confidence in our child. You know, we might name them Victoria or Catherine or some, some name, George. You know, a good... uh, (laughs) That that hurts when you do things like that. (laughs) Actually, we're, we're more apt today to name children based on names that are popular. As a matter of fact, in, in 2014, these were the 10 most popular names of girls and the 10 most popular names of boys. Any of you name your children or grandchildren any of the names you see on the screen? Yeah, look at there. See there? Those were, those were the most popular names of 2014. Uh, just a little bit of history for you here. Between 1813 and 1950, the name George was on the top 10 list. We had a long reign there. So my dad was named George during that period. Then he named me George during that period. And I didn't do my due diligence with history. and didn't know the run was over, but named my son George anyway. But he read the history books and knew that it was over. So he didn't name his son George. But it's coming back, isn't it? I mean, now we've got, we've got royalty named George. In fact, some of you might give consideration to naming a child George. Uh, I mean, it's becoming popular again. Quit laughing. <laughs> we might name a child based on someone we know that we like, which is another good reason to name a child George. Or, <laughs> or we might avoid a name based on someone we don't like. For example, I can't imagine anybody naming a child Rod or Campbell. (laughs) But people do. But we don't name a child because of what he's like. Uh, My parents gave no thought, I don't think, to the name George. Uh, George means tiller of the soil, and I can't even grow tomatoes. (laughs) But people who love me bring me tomatoes. (laughs) Take notes when I'm preaching, please. We, we don't name a child because of the meaning of the name, but the Israelites did. In fact, they named a child on purpose. Let me give you some reasons why they might name a child. First of all, they might name a child after an object. Uh, The name Terah, for example, means wild goat. I suppose for eight days they watched this little girl and they said, she's acting like a wild goat. So we name her Terah. Uh, The name Leah means wild cow. Jonah means wild dove, not quite so bad. Uh, Tamar means palm tree, and Beth means house. I don't know if they named her that because she was born in a house or big as a house. I don't know. But but they would oftentimes name a child based on an object. Sometimes the Israelites would name a child based on a physical condition. For example, Thomas in the New Testament means twin, and he was a twin. It was a physical condition. Uh, Noah meant rest or or comfort, and he was a comfort. Um, Chapra meant meant beauty. So sometimes they would name a child based on a physical condition, sometimes a national uh, condition. When the uh, Ark of the Covenant was taken away out of Israel, 
Phineas' wife was pregnant at that time, and she went into premature labor, and she named the child Ichabod, meaning the glory of God has departed. And the Ark of the Covenant, the glory of God had departed. Uh, sometimes prophetically is the way a child is named. Joshua, uh, for example, means savior or deliverer, and it was a prophetic name. Uh, sometimes, however, uh, it was birth conditions that caused the couple to name a child. Uh, you remember when, uh, uh, when uh, uh, Sarah was 90 years old and learned that she was pregnant, she started laughing and named the child Isaac, which means laughter. Now, sometimes, however, are you listening? God, God would change somebody's name. And that was always kind of interesting when God changed the name. For example, he changed the name Simon to Peter after his conversion. He changed Jacob, which meant trickster, to Israel, which meant prince, after he no longer was, uh, was a deceiver and a trickster. Uh, he changed the name Naomi, which meant pleasant, to Myro, which meant bitter, after she became bitter. God changed her name. He changed the name Saul to Paul, after his experience at Cyprus. He changed the name Levi, which meant tax collector, to Matthew, which meant a gift to God, and Matthew became a gift to God. And Abram, which meant exalted father, he changed his name to Abraham, which meant highly exalted father. Now, with that introduction, I want you to look at Revelation this morning in chapter number, tw uh, number 2 and verse 17. It'll be on the screen, and you, you can find it quickly in your Bible maybe, but look on the screen. Here's what the Scripture says. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. Watch it now. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. I like the way also that the message gives it to us. Listen from the message. I will give the sacred manna to every conqueror. I'll also give a clear, smooth stone inscribed with a new name, your secret new name. Now, why would God give us a white stone? There was one in your seat for you. And why would God put on that white stone a name different from the name we already have been given? And what's the purpose and what's the meaning? What's the value and when do we get it? Now, scholars are going to kind of be up in the air over the mystery about this a little bit. And so uh, I want to tell you some of the, some of the meanings of stones uh, in old, uh, ancient times, old stones, old time. In, in Greece, a jury would be given two stones. Everyone in the jury was given two stones, a black stone and a white stone. And when it came time to vote on the one who was being prosecuted, they would vote by using the stones. A black stone would mean guilty, and a white stone would mean acquittal or innocent. And so they were used in that way. The, different, the reason this doesn't apply here, though, is that the person's name was not written on it. So even though a white stone would mean acquittal, his name wasn't written on it. So that's not what Scripture is talking about in Revelation when it talks about a white stone with a name written on it. Another time when we find about small stones, a stone was called a, a tessera, and it was used in ancient Rome as an admittance to a, an event. And so it wasn't always white. It didn't have to be white. But beyond that, it didn't have your name on it either. It was just something like, you know, like a ticket. You go purchase a ticket, and then when you went into the event, you just gave them your ticket, which really was a stone. But it wasn't always white. It was just a stone. It didn't have your name on it. So that's not what the Scripture's talking about. A white stone was also used in olden times as a charm, and people would hold it, hang it around their neck. But that referred more to sorcery, and I don't think God would be using sorcery as, a, as an illustration. Do you? Do your head like this. No, he wouldn't. Do your head like this. A few rattled, but do your head like this. Yeah. So, so if, if it had to do with sorcery, I, I don't think that's what God's talking about. Now, we do know that important buildings had white stone. In fact, Revelation is writing to the church at Pergamum and the temple of Ecclesiophius had white stones all around it. And on those stones were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. But that's not what this means either, because those names were already written on there. And so that's not what it meant. We know that the breastplate of the high priest had white stones in it. 
but they too had the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so that's not, that's not what we're talking about either. I think possibly the best understanding of the white stone has probably to do with the ancient Roman custom of awarding a white stone to victors in, in athletic events. And the stone was given to them and their name was inscribed on it. And then they used that stone as the admittance to the victory banquet for all those who were victors in the athletic event. That sounds a little closer to what the scripture says because we know that believers are going to have admission to the messianic feast, so says Revelation chapter 19. Now, I want to get to this thing about a new name because a new name, I'm convinced as I read scripture, has to do with a character change that takes place in our life. Every time in Scripture that you see God change somebody's name, it always ref was reflective of a character change that took place in their life. So when the Scripture says He's going to give us a new name, I think it's the result of the Holy Spirit's work of conforming believers to the holiness of Christ. We read in Revelation 19, listen to this. It was granted to the bride or the church, clothed yourself, herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And then John goes on to write, he says, and the angel said unto me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, but even more intriguing to me is this new name written on a stone. It says that no one knows except the one who receives it. I want you to listen to the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 62. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a what? Say it. Amen. That the mouth of the Lord will give. Isaiah 65, 15 says, but God's servants he will call by what? Are you listening? Let me go back to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the one who is victorious. I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that, that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Now, what I want you to get is this. This is an individual thing. This is not, this group gets a, all get a stone with the same name. This group all get a stone with the same name. This one all, it's, it's not, that's not it. It's an individual thing. It's personal. It's, it's something that you and I and the Lord have a personal relationship to determine the new name. Now, a lot of us do this. We, we use nicknames and we use all kinds of special names. But I want to tell you, in heaven, you're not going to be known by the name you're known here. When you get to heaven, God's not going to say, well, good night. There's old Rod Campbell. I didn't expect to see him here. No, God. I'm picking on Rod because he's not here today. He's just, staying home. he's just staying home doing nothing. I have no idea. But God's not, going to, God's not going to say, there's Jim. There's Dick. There's Bill. There's Mary. There's, God's not going to do that. We're going to call, be called by a new name. Now, we do that all the time, don't we? We call people lefty, if they're left-handed, hey, lefty. If they don't have any hair, hey, chrome dome, you know. <laughs> when, when, I was in, when I was in college, I was really thin, and they called me skinny legs. Nobody does that anymore, but I was called skinny legs. We called, I, I see Hal every Sunday, I said, morning, general. I called him general. Depending on how much he likes me, some days I'm a private, others a corporal. I've even been a sergeant to him before, not much more than that. We call people by different names. We, we've gotten our Legacy 55 folks together in different events and stuff, even our small group. And just as a way of remembering people's names, we ask everybody to add an adjective before their name so they could have, you know, like a nickname. And, you know, and, and we, laughing Laura Lee, you know, uh, eating Ed, silly Sally, devilish Dave, bottle blonde Bobby. <laughs> Sassy Sharon. <laughs> but you're not going to get to, you're not going to get to pick your own name there. We, uh, we give people names. My daughter who sang a moment ago, that's our youngest daughter. 
And when she was little, I gave her a nickname. When her older sister was little, I gave her a nickname. I called the older sister Princess. And when Holly was born, I called her Angel Bunny. These are my Father's Day cards from my two daughters. My 40-year-old daughter signs hers Princess. My 29-year-old daughter signs hers Angel Bunny. It's a nickname that stuck, still does. I gave them that name, but they still call themselves that. But when we get to heaven, it's not a name we're going to get to choose for ourselves. But if God gave us names here on earth that were a reflection of our character here, what do you think he's going to use for the criteria for a name in heaven? What do you think? Let me go back over that. If God gave people names here when he changed their name that was based on their character, what do you think will be the basis for giving us a new name in glory? What? Character? I think so too. I think the new name in glory that's going to be written on our white stone, I mean, if God's already been giving us evidence of giving people names based on their character. I mean, have you ever said this? You know, the more I'm around him, the more I get to know him. You know why you say that? You get to know a little bit about his character, don't you? I mean, the, the, the more I'm around Shirley Foos, the more I get to know her. I was driving down 27 the other day, and I, and I admit I was going a little fast, and all of a sudden this red Mustang blows by me. So how do you know it was Shirley? I could barely see the music notes on the side of her car. It was a blur, but I could see it. The more I'm around Shirley, the more I get to know. She has a lead foot. I would suggest, based on today, lead foot Shirley would be... I mean, she's not just fast, <laughs> ultra fast. <laughs> but you do that all the time. Well, the more I get to know her, the more I know her. It's because you're starting to learn a little bit about her character. And our character is what we really are. That's who we really are. You and I are really who our character qualities are. We walk through here. In the mornings before the service, we glad hand everybody. How you doing? Yeah, you glad hand everybody. And then Pastor Tim says, let's turn around and greet people. And we do the same thing all over again, pass germs to each other and stuff. That's not who you are. You know who you and I are? Who you and I is? You know who we are? <laughs> Look, here's who we are. We are, are you listening? Lean in just a little bit, and I'm going to tell you who we are. Lean in. <laughs> we are who we are at night when the lights are out and we're looking at the back of our eyelids. That's right. That's who we are. Yes. This, this is not who I am. This is who you see that I am. That's not who Shirley is when she's up here playing the piano and bouncing around. No, she's who she is going down 27 at 75 miles. Away. That's who Shirley is. You are and I am who I am when nobody's around, when nobody else sees me, when no one is looking but God. That's who I am. That's who you are. The rest of the time, we are play acting and pretending. Yes. I want to impress you. I want you to like me. But I'm who I really am. My real character is who I am in the dark. When nobody knows and nobody sees and nobody hears but God. And that's going to be the basis for getting a new name in glory with our name written on it that nobody knows but us. God will simply call us by our character qualities because that's who we really are. You know what I think? I think Peter just got his name early. See, his name was Cephas, and God changed it to Peter. Because God saw a character change take place in Peter's life. And when the character change took place, God said, man, that guy's like a rock. I can build my church on a guy like that. And he just changed his name early because he saw character change in him. 
I think Jacob, same thing. Because you're no longer tricking people and deceiving people. No, there's a difference in you. I'm going to call you Israel. You, you will be the name of my nation. And when God sees a character change in you and me, that'll be the name that he'll use in heaven. Scripture says in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I'll give some of the hidden manna. I'll also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it. Watch it. Known only to the one who receives it. See, there's more to it than just this new name. There's more to it than just the newness. It's, it's a name nobody knows except the individual who receives it. It's intimate. It's personal. And it's revealing the inner secrets of, of who I am. Listen to Colossians 3.3. 3. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Church, we, we take way too casually our thoughts and our actions. I'm going to say that again because I'm not sure everybody got it. We take way too casually our thoughts and our actions. Because you know what we do with our thoughts and our actions? Before long, we start living them out. Did you know that every action that we do, we first drew it out on the blueprint of our mind? Somebody says, boy, oh, so-and-so, he fell into sin. No, he didn't. He'd been thinking about it for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. He didn't, he didn't just, bang, fall into sin. No. You draw it out first on the blueprint of your mind. You think about it. You try to decide, can I get away with it? Is anybody going to know about it? Who's going to find out? Is there any possibility? Anybody? You think about it for a long time. And then one day you say, I believe I can get away with this. I don't believe anybody will know. I don't think anybody will see. And then we engage in it and we forget that God knows and sees everything we do and say. Talk to me, church. Amen. We take way too casually our thoughts. There comes a time when we start living them out. Now, I don't know your actions all the time. I just saw Shirley that one time. I don't know your actions all the time. And I don't know your heart any of the time. You don't know my actions all the time. You see me here. You may see me at the mall or at the grocery store. Shirley didn't see me on 27 because she was going too fast, but you may see me <laughs> driving down 27. But you don't know my actions all the time. And you don't know my heart any of the time. And I don't know your heart any of the time. So you're going to have to think for yourself this morning. If eternity began for you, in five minutes, what's the possibility of a name that God might inscribe on the white stone that he would give to you? A new name, not Bill, not Silly Sally, a new name, a name that describes your current character. Here's some possibilities. You've got, to think, you've got to think for yourself now. But I'll give you some possibilities to think through. Disciplined, would God say, you are one disciplined person. Wow. I want you to go through all eternity, eternity being known as a disciplined person. Or are you a doubter? Are you cheerful? Or are you cantankerous? Devoted or demanding? Benevolent or always blaming? Hospitable or selfish? I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not suggesting any of those belong to anybody because, see, I don't know your heart. I'm just giving you some ideas to think about because if eternity began this morning, we would all get a white stone with a new name that describes the character we've been living, who we really are in here when nobody's watching and nobody's seeing and nobody's listening except God. What's your new name? Church, we better take this seriously. Anybody here given a name that you don't like? Your parents gave you a name, you just don't like the name. Anybody? You know, one, two, three. I'm not going to come and ask you, but 
you've lived with it a few years. But can you imagine living for all eternity with a name you didn't like? <laughs> you can change your name now. I mean, if, you, if it really mattered, you could change your name. Some people have. Well, you get that white stone in heaven, you're not going to be changing that name. I mean, some more possibilities would be unreliable, troublemaker, arrogant, proud, critical, jealous, sarcastic, rude, stubborn, quarrelsome. I mean, what, what kind of a, what do you think the name is going to be that God is going to inscribe on a stone for you? Maybe dependable, because some of you really are. Maybe trustworthy, because some of you really are. Maybe joyful, because many of you really are. Maybe it's generous because that's the spirit that you have inside of you. But you check out the scriptures and every single time God ever named somebody, every time he changed their name, it always described their character. So don't you be surprised when you and I get to heaven and we get a white stone and the new name that's written on it describes our character that we live while we're here. Mary Magdalene was given that second name after she was converted. You know what Magdalene means? It means reformed prostitute. I don't think she would mind going through eternity. I'm a reformed prostitute. That's what God did for me. He changed me and he forgave me and he made me new and fresh. I'm reformed by the grace of God. You are listening this morning to a reformed alcoholic. And by the grace of God, I am reformed. I'll take that name. Because it's God's grace. What name do you want? May I remind you this morning that this life is a greater preparation for heaven than we sometimes remember. Church, we're not just putting in our three or four score here and checking off the calendar and, and checking out. No, this is a preparation for heaven. You remember the old song, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Would, would you sing it with Pastor Tim? Would you sing it with him? We're going to do it much slower than maybe you've been accustomed to. But, but would you sing that? Lead us in singing that. Let, let's sing. You sing it with him. Come on, let's do it together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound Yeah. And time shall be no more And the morning breaks Eternal, bright, and fair. Now listen, listen. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop. I grew up singing that, and so did you. I used to think for all my life, when, I sung, when I, we were singing that song, I thought, oh, we're going to get to heaven, and the book of life and the Lamb's book of life are going to be open. And, and whoever does it for God is going to start calling the roll. And he's going to say, George Thomas, and here, here, Lord. Melanie Thomas, and here, here, Lord. Dale Kinsey, and here, Lord. And I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think we're going to already have our white stone, our smooth stone, with our new name written on it. And I think the roll call is going to be more like this. Generous, stand up, generous. I have your white stone. This will be yours for all eternity. 
faithful, faithful. Stand up back there, faithful. <laughs> I, I, got, I got you stoned. Glad you're here. Encourager? What an encourager you have. Man, stand up. I got you white stone. Soul winner? Man, you were so burdened about seeing people come to Christ. I got you, I got you stone right there. Got your name, new name on it. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore in the role generous, faithful, caregiver, lover of people, hospitable, bird bearer, and on and on. I'll be happy to stand then, won't you? I'll take that stone, sir. I'll take that stone. Well, just keep it for eternity because that's your new name. The other one, that was for earth. This one's for eternity. If you could choose this morning the name you'd like here, all you have to do is start making a character change. And as you make that character change, you become a reflection of the name that you'd love to have. And guess what? God in heaven will acknowledge it and see it. And it just may very well be that you so acted it out while you were here that when you get to heaven, God will say, you wanted to be faithful, you made it. You were faithful. You wanted to be hospitable, you did it. Congratulations, I saw it, I witnessed it. That's who you really became. Choose my own name. And so do you. Or you can just roll the dice. Eat, drink, and be merry. Live carefree. And maybe, maybe not be so happy with the name when you get to heaven. Would you pray with me? Father God, we do take so casually this life and we forget sometimes there is an eternity and the character qualities that we're exhibiting right now is going to determine the name written with the finger of God on a white stone a new name name given to us that only we will know by the grace of God. God, would you take your word this morning? Would you speak to our hearts in such a way that we would make some choices this morning for who we want to be known as? And begin to practice living out now who we want to be then. so that we give you glory both now and forever. In Jesus' name. Look up here just one minute. That rock's for you to take home. Take home, take it home and pray about it. Spend a little time deciding who you want to be, what name you would like to be called in heaven, and then get you a Sharpie and print it on there so you can read it and put it in a place that's conspicuous so you can see it often. Now, why, why do that? Because the world is going to bombard you to keep you from being that. This is not a one-time choice you can make while you sit here today and walk out of here, okay, that's me from now on. 
No, no, you'll have to work at it. Because Satan doesn't want us to be this. So I challenge you this morning. Decide the name you want to hear called when the roll is called up yonder. Write it on your stone. Keep it before you. And ask God to let you become that for Jesus' sake. Amen.